Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people think they can do whatever the heck they want because they're special. And guys, in this episode, you'll hear how OP's 51-year-old sister, 51, cries to mom because OP won't give up her house. It's such a fantastically ridiculous story. And I hope you enjoy the other stories as well. And do remember to hit that subscribe button for future tales, if you haven't already. Yesterday, I go to Walmart to return faulty ink cartridges. The ones I bought came with two black inks, not a black and a red, yellow, blue. Anyways, so I pull up there and I see some jerk decides to take his huge giant truck and double park it illegally on the handicap spots with no blue placard and then another car was parked in the no parking area. Now I do have a disability, but I usually don't choose to park handicapped because unless I have a severe MS flare up, I can walk, so I don't feel the need to park close. Probably the third time this week. Upon seeing this idiot park and get out, I got pretty upset, because what if a handicapped person needed it? I then decided to call the non-emergency police line to report the violation and to give both plate numbers. The cops arrived pretty quick. I told them what I saw, and they also confirmed that no handicap placard was in the truck, and they let me go on my merry way. About an hour later, I'm walking out with a bag of needed groceries and a receipt for my refund and I see two tow trucks getting the illegally parked vehicles. It's at this moment the owners happen to come out. I'm close enough to hear that they were yelling, so it wasn't hard to hear. They were both trying to argue. Cops tell one person, Ma'am, this isn't a parking space, and there's plenty of open spots further down. To which she goes, But that's way too far. I've only been gone for five minutes. The guy in the truck also says he was gone for five minutes as well. And the other officer's like, That's funny because we got this report an hour ago. And, oh sir, do you happen to have a handicap permit? At this, the guy grumbles and says, No, I don't have a permit. Do I look like a cripple? The officer then looks like she sighs, and she writes a ticket and hands it to him. He then turns red and screams, $2,000? Are you effing kidding me? The cop then says plainly to him, Take it up with traffic court, sir, not me. The other lady then gets fined $500 for illegal parking, and both vehicles were towed, leaving the owners calling people to come get them, all pissed off and angry. I then walk to my car snickering to myself and drive home. Man, parking in one handicapped spot without a placard is bad enough, guys, but how freaking entitled do you have to be to park in two handicapped spots, and then have the audacity to start screaming at police? I absolutely love when these idiots get what they deserve, and I hope the lesson was learned with that $2,000 ticket. That was a pretty expensive trip to Walmart, sir. Okay, so the next story is submitted by a longtime listener named Cassandra, and she says, So, listening to your stories, Fluff, I wanted to submit a story about my own entitled witch of a sister. I think you need to strap yourself in for this roller coaster. I'm currently a 46-year-old woman, and my sister is 51 years old. Growing up, my sister and I never got along. She was always extremely entitled, selfish, and a narcissistic person who felt like she deserved everything in life. My sister is also a gold digger, but without the good looks, I'm afraid all she has is a terrible personality, which is probably why she's still single, despite being 51 years old. Now, since my sister is a narcissist and she's materialistic, she believes that nobody in this world loves her unless they're giving her things, bowing down to her every command, and doing borderline outrageous things for her. My parents are in their late 70s, and she still acts like they need to do everything for her. So last month for Christmas, she literally throws a temper tantrum because she didn't get good presents from anybody. She's also never really held down a job before, and she has no post-secondary education, so she doesn't have the money to buy nice things for herself. Anyways, on with the story. So last year, after her boyfriend of 7 months broke up with her, she lived in my house with myself and hubby. She was there for about 4 months before my husband and I and our teenage daughter couldn't stand her snooping around, leaving messes everywhere, and just overall being an inconsiderate person. One night, we were awoken by her inviting her drunk friends over to my house at nightmarish hours, at around 3am on a Thursday night. They consisted of the worst people you could ever meet. We came downstairs to find seven people in my kitchen, with two flats of beer and a ton of weed all over my kitchen counters, and right then and there, I decided to kick my sister out. They all proceeded to say that I had no right to kick them out, and that this was my sister's house, and she invited them all over for a party. Now I wish I was lying. So long story short, she had to pack her bags and get out. My husband and I ended up covering a damaged deposit and the first month's rent, so she could afford to move into some low-income apartment building. So ever since I kicked her out of my home, she has spent the last few months harassing me about letting her move back into my home. 
Now, my husband and I have pretty good careers. He's a chiropractor with his own practice, and I'm a nurse. We both worked really hard to get where we are, and with that, we live in a very modest-sized home in a better neighborhood in the city. My 51-year-old sister's been calling and harassing my parents non-stop, telling them to make me let her live in my house again. But I told her no. She literally said that she would rather die than to live in some stupid low-income trashy apartment that's dirty, and to not cry too hard when she ends her life over nobody caring about her. I told her that's her own doing, and her response was, no, because nobody loves me. Thankfully, my parents didn't give in. She then left my husband and I a very long, drunken voicemail saying that we have everything in life, while she has nothing. Telling us that we don't love her, and with our income, we can just afford to let her live in my current home rent-free, while we buy another house. My sister is now furious at me. She told me, until I can agree with letting her live rent-free in my house again, she won't be treating us like family anymore because family wouldn't dare let each other live in disgusting housing. Thankfully, my parents have retired to a different state, and she won't be harassing them about moving into their home anytime soon. When I told my husband this, he just laughed and asked me to call her back and try to get her to promise what she said. Now, my husband is ecstatic about this, and quite frankly, I am too. But with her personality, we know it won't last. I hope this post is entitled enough to share with your listeners, Fluff. Guys, of course it's entitled enough. I'm honestly shocked, but I'm not surprised. It's unfortunate that some people do go through their whole lives with this entitled mentality that the world owes them everything, and it's so sad because in the end, they'll have nothing, and then they become super toxic to everybody around them like OP's sister. Cassandra, if you're listening, thank you so much for this crazy story submission, and guys, I hope you enjoyed Cassandra's story as well. So, for a bit of setting up, I work at a business location that easily rhymes with buck-free keyses. It was my first job, and I worked my butt off to keep it. It's the easiest job to have where I live, and I wouldn't trade it for the world if I was ever honest. Now, ours isn't the prettiest place, nor the largest, but all the staff I work with are great, and so are most of the managers. I even became a manager after three years of dedication at this place, and I'm pretty proud of myself for it. Now, a lot of people in my area come in, and they're usually surprised or upset with how pricey things are here. This usually changes when they realize after our explaining that our place is the only one in a good two or three hundred miles. Now, with working at a place like Buck Free Keys's, we do encounter a lot of entitled moms and dads. It's a kid's place, so unsurprising, right? Well, a week or two ago was my area spring break, and this is where I met the most stubborn, evil old hag that I've ever thought one could meet. And working where I work, I've met a lot. So that says a lot. We were busy throughout the day, and as one of the two managers on duty, I'm helping the front house stay afloat. Between helping fix some of the more difficult machines and soothing the complaints of some more difficult patrons, everything's been going well. One might have even thought, too well. So right after I finished telling my staff that today was going to be a fun one, a Karen comes in. Now this woman could have pickled a live elephant with the sheer amount of bitchiness resting on her face. I had been walking over to another staff member at the kid check station, which is essentially where we check your kids in with you. Now what this means is we literally give you a stamp and your kid a matching stamp in invisible ink, so they leave with you and not somebody else. Anyhow, Karen's come in with her grandkid, and the apparent husband who's now my favorite action hero arrives precisely when he's needed. The woman enters first, and she immediately turns her nose up at my staff member, who politely asks to see their hands so they can get a stamp. With this, Karen says, Why are you stamping us? We don't need a stamp. My employee tells her, Ma'am, the stamps are so that nobody leaves with any of your kids. They're supposed to leave with y'all. She says, Well, my granddaughter and my grandson are too little to get a stamp. Now, during all of this, me and my staff member are getting treated to the extremest form of the stink eye that I've ever seen from a grown human. This woman is glaring at us in such a way that I only thought was possible by demons, and perhaps very, very irate cats. She's gone back and forth with my staff member, and she still has yet to even raise her hand for a stamp. Now, I do want to note that my coworker and I are both the darkest people in the entire store. Skin-wise, an important thing to note, I promise. And neither of us are very shy about letting our accents change, depending on the people we talk to. If we're talking to someone from the hood, heck, we hood too. Someone from the nicer parts of town will say, yes ma'am, no ma'am, we hope you have an absolutely blessed day ma'am. This too is important. We've been nothing but pleasant as can be. The whole time, my staff member has been using the nicest polite voice. 
He's already a generally soft-spoken dude, but this is the nicest and most panicked I've ever seen him getting. Now this woman, this fiend, is getting increasingly louder, while the two children are standing behind her looking more and more embarrassed because she's refusing a stamp. The granddaughter is the older of the two, and the grandson is clinging to her hand with the most nervous stare possible. All the while, the Karen's just growing louder and more unruly. I quickly step in, taking over, and letting my staff member turn and begin checking people out of the kid check. And apparently, this was the wrong move. As Karen says, clearly, loudly, and with him still standing right next to me, Oh good, another one. Y'all must breed like roaches. Now, this Karen said that in such a casual tone that she might have been talking about the weather. I'm thinking, I'm sorry, what? I was caught so off guard by the sheer nonchalance of her statement that I can't do anything but stare. But then was not the time. I simply hold out my hands and look the woman in her eyes, and they are furious. So I speak, using my own kind voice and say, Ma'am, if your kids can't be stamped, we do have stickers for them, but we can't let you in otherwise. I say this as coolly as I can. It was at this point that the granddaughter speaks up and says, Gammy, Gammy, who then turns and immediately hisses at the granddaughter and says, Shush, Gammy is talking. After which she turns back around and proceeds to holler for a manager, over my shoulder, directly in front of me. She screams, Can I speak to a manager please? Hello, I need some help. Now, I had mentioned earlier that I myself am a manager, and we wear these nice red lanyards that clearly mark us out as managers. And by what means, I can hear you ask? With the words manager, written across the length of the lanyard in bright white against the red background. I raise my lanyard at her and continue to stare as calmly as I can at this woman and state that I am in fact a manager. And wow, she sneers at me, y'all. She told me, well, someone like you ain't no help to someone like me. I then say to her, ma'am, I'm a manager, and any other manager will tell. She then screams over me at my other employee. She says, oh, hello, hey, you, sweetie, over there, can you go get your manager for me? She screams past me, waving her arms at my cashier, who's a short walk away from the kid check. And at this, my cashier, bless her soul, pauses in the middle of the order she's taking, looks directly at me, and makes the most confused face ever and says, He's right there, ma'am. She shouted that across the way, and I could have hugged her right then and there, for she immediately went back to her own work. Now this sends Karen into hysterics. She then points a finger under my nose, and she begins jabbing my chest to boot and says, Well, where's your manager then? I want to speak to your boss. Why won't you just let me and my babies go in? At this point, the little girl speaks up again and says, Gammy, mommy and daddy... Gammy turns around and screams that to her, and I quote, Shush, before Gammy throws you in the trash like daddy should have. Now at this, the staff member next to me stops at hearing this. He then looks at me, looks at the woman, and I can see his brain telling him that violence is indeed the answer. He begins to open his mouth. His shoulders and spine are pulling back in straight, and he's sucking in a breath, when I nudge him with my foot and send him to go get my manager coworker. There are no chances for things to get worse at this point. The little girl's crying, her brother's crying, and Gammy has turned around and screamed at me once more. Y'all, I felt like I was trapped in that conversation for eternity. The woman was going round in circles, telling me to get my boss and saying, look what you made me do. Before finally, as my other manager co-worker's walking up, she hisses the winning statement in my face. She says, this is why you, racial slur for darker people, shouldn't be getting jobs like this. Now, I'm not a very large guy by any means. I'm just 5'11", and I'm essentially a walking collection of sticks and skin. And I do have a terrible habit of smiling when I'm stressed or upset. Now would be a fair time to assume that I would be upset. And as such, I'm smiling as I tell this woman, Ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. If you don't vacate the premises, I will be calling the police. At this, she screams back at me and says, Are you threatening me? And foolishly, I replied, no ma'am, I'm promising you. And this sends her on another spiel. Right as my fellow manager walks up, the front doors to the store open up, and in comes my hero, who storms through those doors like a hurricane given life. Y'all, this was a man who was suntanned white, he was tall and broad, with tattoos running from his shoulders to his wrists. He's her son, and here he comes with an expression that shouts that he's displeased, and he says, Mom, what are you doing here? 
His voice rumbles the mountain as Gam Gam turns around and she immediately shifts tactics and says, Oh, Jacob, you're finally here. Would you please tell this young man that he can let us in now? I was telling him that we needed to wait for you and we were just chatting. He then looks at her and says, Well, why are these kids crying? She then tells him, Oh, they got scared of the stamps. This young man right here didn't listen when I told him that they don't like stamps. The son replies, Mom, stop. Just stop. My daughter called me. I could hear you. I heard everything from when you started shrieking at these people. He then steps forward and scoops up his kids. And sure enough, there's the sound of plastic hitting the floor as a flip phone falls from the daughter's hand. I myself am still at a loss for words of how she managed to get that call started. And I could no more tell you as much as Gam Gam could, who looked absolutely floored. He then says to her, you're done. You don't deserve to see these kids anymore. My kids, who you love so much, get out and go home. He grumbled that with a tone that would have made me crap my pants if I were the one being chastised. And so the woman did go, not without crying crocodile tears and not without shrieking, you can't do that to your mother, I deserve to see your grandkids. He then turns around and handed his crying children to his wife who had just walked in and then leaned into her face, and I mean quite literally, to rumble the most intense parting words that I've ever heard. He said, Mom, leave, before I effing carry you out. I'll throw you in the trash, right here. The woman then swiftly made her exit, sobbing and wailing all the way out. The man then walks over to me, and I'm trying my damnedest not to run for cover at the wrathful expression that turns my way. He said to me, I'm so sorry about that. I told him, no problem, would your kids like to have something off the prize wall? And thus, our story does end. What a crazy story that was guys, and talk about mega entitlement plus being racist as well. Yeah, at that point, 100% no contact with mom after that. You've definitely lost all privileges by taking the grandkids out to a children's place and spewing that nonsense and harassing everybody. Guys, I find it so funny that the young girl was probably trying to tell Gam Gam Karen that she was on the phone with mommy and daddy before Gam Gam turns around and says to her, shush, or I'll throw you in the trash like daddy should have. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today because I sure as heck did. If you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, an entitled Karen attacks OP on a bus, and an off-duty officer teaches her a lesson that she'll never forget. Check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy, we'll see you guys in the next one. We love you.